All right, welcome back. So for the final operation for exercise number six, we wanna create the FBM mill operation, just like we've created for the front view. We're gonna do that on the right side view as well. Let's go ahead and do that. Now, because we've created one earlier, we've created an FBM mill operation earlier, it actually saves all the options there for you. Let me go ahead and get started and I'll show you what I mean. Go to toolpath and come over here and select the down arrows and select FBM mill. All right, so there's your FPM toolpath mill. I'm gonna go all the way up and select setup. You realize that this is checked now and this is checked as well. That's because we've already created it and it saves all the options for you. And that's because in tool settings, we told that to. Remember all those checks that I always have you checked on tool settings on the right side? Those help you save all the options every time you reuse an operation. It saves all the options for you in case you wanna use the same features for the next operation. So the same options that are in here, okay? So all you need to do here is go to comment. We're gonna call this FBM mill right side. Now something very important over here to change is the search plane. This is gonna be the right side. Now it's already on the right side. If it's not, make sure to change this to the right side. And we'll keep minimize tool change there. Now we're gonna keep everything the same. We want them to mill it the same way it milled the front view, okay? So we'll keep everything the same. We'll go all the way down to features and you still wanna come over here and select detect. Remember, as long as this X is there, it's gonna think that you're trying, you're still working on the other plane. So make sure to select detect so MasterCam detects the new features. As you can see, minimum radius of 0.1875 and the depth is a new depth of point, negative 0.25, okay? So let's go ahead and select okay over here to accept that and allow MasterCam to create the machining operation for you, you should have only two operations. Unless you've selected to create a rest milling operation or finish the bottom uh, sides or the floors, then you would have uh, three or four operations. For what we've selected, you should only have two operations. But as you need to notice, again, the FBM one operation is created after setup number three. So again, left click on this and drag it to setup number three and let go. And then select make subgroup. And there you go, now FBM mill is part of the subgroup setup number three. All right, so now we're all set up and ready. Let's go ahead and verify the selected operation to make sure everything is done correct. You're gonna notice that there's two operations. Go ahead and select play. There's the first one. And there you go, and then it goes down and it finishes off with the second tool with the radius of 0.1875. So there you go, that looks really good. And now we've completed all three sides. Let's go ahead and actually select all of them now. So select machine group and select verify selected operations. All right, so now if you place it the isometric view, you're still gonna get this side. So if you place the isometric view, that's because our setup is on the third side. So what you're gonna wanna do is rotate your part and play each of those separately if you like. Or go ahead and play the first one, for example. The first three are gonna be together. When they're done, Go ahead and make sure that you can view all three sides. This way you're gonna notice a tool come in from this side, machine here, and then the last tool is gonna come in to the right side and machine here. But remember, those are three different setups. You're actually stopping the machine in between all three setups. You're moving your part so that each of those is on the top, and then you would run the second program. So remember, this is something very important. Three setups, meaning you are changing the part location three different times. You are actually moving your part three different times. You're gonna remove it from the machine and flip it yourself. Just because you're changing it here does not mean the part obviously is not gonna flip itself into the machine, okay? So those are three different setups. Each of those is a separate program, but it's very important to leave them all together because you are machining that entire part in one program, okay? You're not creating a different program for each of the sides. You do not wanna do that. You don't wanna have three different MasterCam programs or NC codes for each of the setups. You wanna have all of them done in MasterCam and just name them properly. This way the next engineer or the next operator knows exactly what he's looking at when he opens that up. All right, so I really hope you enjoyed this DVD. This is gonna be the MasterCam 2D mill beginner DVD. Remember, there will be a lot more advanced stuff. This is only utilizing X and Y while machining up and down, okay? The 3D will be utilizing X, Y, and Z. So it's a lot more complicated, a lot more complex, and that will be the next DVD after this. So this is the beginners and the next DVD will be advanced. I hope you enjoyed this DVD and look forward to seeing you 
in the future DVDs like 3D mill and solids. Again, I highly recommend solids with any mill or lathe DVD. So if you haven't picked up solids or if you don't feel comfortable creating solids in Mastercam, I highly recommend you do that because it will save you a lot of time.